you were to look up the definition of community, it would probably say something along the lines of a group of people living within the same geographic location or having a particular characteristic or interest in common. Well, I come from a rather unique community. This is known as the steel bending superhuman community, also known as the strong men. And what I learned from this community were lessons in personal achievement that had direct applications to multiple things within our lives and in our careers. Within this community, I learned to perform feats of strength, some of which I'm gonna be demonstrating for you today, but I also learned how to break the locks and chains that prevented me from reaching my true potential, which coincidentally brings me to my first set of feats and the reasons that I'm dressed up like this. Upon my wrist are some shackles that are attached to a padlock, and on my chest is a chest expansion belt which holds a steel chain in place. And what I'm going to attempt to do is to break free of these using my strength. Oh, and by the way, everything you're about to say, see today is real. First, the lock. That's one down. Now breaking the chain with the chest expansion belt. Well, I am glad to get that one off my chest. <laughs> so back about 100 or so years ago, there was no television or radio. All entertainment had to be witnessed live. And Vaudeville Variety Theater was the premier choice for family-friendly entertainment. Bear with me one moment here while I get this off. There we go. So amongst the strong men, they weren't necessarily recognized by their peers and the others of their community as a strong man unless they could bend one of these in their hands. This is a six inch spike, also known as a 60 penny nail, and it represented the rite of passage for the strongman performers of, during the vaudeville era. The only, the only thing I'm gonna be using for protection is this soft suede wrap. First we wrap up the pointy end. That would hurt really bad. <sighs> 60 penny nail, also known as a six inch spike. I guess you could say I nailed that one. You know what, I will actually pass these things around the room. Here's another classic feat of strength, also known as bending a structural steel bar. This is what they use to make buildings and bridges and railroads and that sort of thing. And this right here is why they pay me the big bucks.
and that's how I steal the show. <laughs> Here's another classic feat of strength. Twisting a horseshoe. I guess, uh, wish me luck. This is more of a modern day feat. <laughs> Don't worry, these are tax deductible. So now that you know how I roll, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the community I roll with. I was the last student of New Jersey Superman, Greg Metonic, before he passed away. And multiple world record holder, Chris Ryder, continued my journey under his direction. And what I learned from them, as well as from others throughout the community is that strength, true strength, is not about what's here, it's about what's up here and in here. Strength is a mindset, strength is an attitude that you take with you throughout your life. My first mentor, Greg Matonic, used to tell me things like, don't be inhibited by the seemingly impossible. Think that you are strong, and you are strong. Many achievements in life, many achievements throughout human history seemed impossible before we started them. Now, they're yesterday's news. My current coach, Hercules Chris Ryder, would tell me that small little increments add up over time to big results. This I used to publish a book, as well as ripped decks of cards, amongst other things. And just about every big goal or dream you could think of is really just little itty bitty steps that add up over time. But probably the biggest lesson I learned, I actually learned before I joined the community. That is what, when I met a legendary strongman named Slim the Hammerman Farman. Slim disclosed the secret to me that he learned from his mentor, the mighty Adam who was a vaudeville era strongman that was about my size that could do things like bite through chains and hold back airplanes from taking off with his hair. Slim said to me, son, did you know that there is a power within you that is equal to every strongman in history, including me? Considering I saw this guy pick up a 24 pound sledgehammer at the end of a 31 inch handle on his 80th birthday, that's saying something. So I was curious about this power. I said, 
What you talking about, Slim? Slim proceeds to tell me that there are numerous times throughout history where ordinary people are able to perform superhuman feats of strength when put into crisis situations. It's documented in stories like elderly women picking cars up off their children, that sort of thing. He says, if that power is within them at that exact moment when they really need it, isn't it inside of all of us just waiting for the right time? The question is, how do you bring it out? Food for thought. And I understood what he was talking about, but I didn't truly get it until one day when I was in my first mentor, Greg Matonic's gym. Greg says to me, there's a particular feat of strength that I want to teach to you that to me is the very epitome of everything it means to be a strong man, of mind over matter. Now this particular feat, I knew that Slim had also done, and he was paying a pretty significant price for it, going blind in one of his eyes from crushing the bones in his face, and he had shooting pains going down his arm from crushing the vertebrae in his neck. Knowing this, I said, Greg, I don't know if I want to learn that feat. Greg says, okay, I respect that. But if you learn this one feat, one day you could become one of the top guys. You could be one of the best in the world. So I sat on that about a week. And suffice it to say, I've been through some stuff that I can't really talk about with the time constraints of this presentation. But I thought to myself, after everything I've been through, just once, I like to be one of the best at something. So I came back the next week, and I'm like, hey, Greg, guess what? I changed my mind. I would like to learn how to bend a steel bar on the bridge of my nose. Greg says, here's how you do it. Take your finger and put it on your nose, on that spot that's right between your eyes. And you just give that a little bit of a push. That's where the steel bar sits. And then you just hold your head like that, Put the steel bar there, pull down really hard, and if you pull hard enough, it'll bend. So I took that steel bar. And I put it on the bridge of my nose like this. And I pulled hard down really hard, and it bent. But before that, <laughs> I said to myself, I know that this is not going to be comfortable. You know, success oftentimes is on the opposite side of our comfort zone. But despite how much it hurts, despite how much discomfort I feel, I'm going to give this everything I've got, no matter what. What if you took that same mindset? What if you took that same mentality to anything in your life, whether it is your relationships, your business, your career, your athletic achievements? When you are willing to give it everything you've got, you will be successful. Now at that time when I was with Greg, that was half-inch round structural steel. This is five-eighths round reinforcing bar. This is what they put into concrete to give a tensile strength to reinforce it. And it has these ridges here that prevent it from moving around in the concrete. That's what digs into my nose. It is very pleasant. Normally I get a countdown from 10, but I just hope you're all ready for this. 5 eighths reinforcing bar. I need a vacation.
Now, even as I did that in Greg's gym, even as I set my world record in that particular feat, and even as I did this just now, I could still feel that I'm holding back ever so slightly. And it's got to make you wonder, how much more is there? Thank you. <laughs>